Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's your brother Usman here from the Deanspiration podcast show, and welcome to a brand new series where I sit down with some wonderful people and have some deep, meaningful conversations about them and their achievements. And today I'm here with Sister Zara Muhammad, mashallah. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Yep. And mum, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're discussing the very important topic of Muslim women in leadership and what that means today and how Zara uh, accomplished what she's done so far. That's coming up. Allah, 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 what do you think? We've kind of upgraded a little bit, haven't we? Do you know we? what? I'm loving that we're visual and not just audio, but I do feel we need a couple of cushions, warm, some warmer touches, but um, it's okay. I'll leave you. I'll, leave, I'll let you away with it this you know, time. Even the fact that I have branded cups. No, but look, and, and yeah, these are, this is really good, but we just got to like spread our wings a bit and embrace new colour schemes, I think. Okay, well... We'll, we'll keep the blue, though. That's okay. Let's get on to the topic for today, okay? okay? okay. So we go, we go back a little bit, a few years, alhamdulillah, yeah. back at university. The reason that I brought you on the show today um, is because, to be honest, the things that you were doing then and mm. the things that you're doing now are... A little bit different. <laughs> not different. The word I was looking for was kind of inspiring because for me, back then as well, I was kind of figuring myself mm. out a little bit. And there was one sister just like trailblazing, <laughs> doing things that no one else was doing. And that's the theme for today's, uh, mm. today's topic, today's show, right? So I want to start kind of not way, way back because we haven't got that much time today. <laughs> but I want to start um, maybe from a few years ago, a couple years okay. back. You did something pretty epic which was you ran for a presidential role for one of the most significant and biggest student islamic organizations in the uk and ireland right forces so you were the first woman president since Mm. i think you said 54 well yeah in 54 years never had had one tell me how that happened that old story um yes paula i guess for me, it was quite an overwhelming experience as well. I mean, I never had any intention, yeah, I'm going to be the folks as president. For me, it started off being Scotland chair and taking care of 14 Islamic societies, then becoming the vice president and taking care of 120 through, four, <laughs> through, through you know regions and all the rest of it. And then presidency was just like a natural progression from the work that I was doing because I was so very much passionate about the development of Muslim students, about giving back and... I guess it just kind of, for the changes that I wanted to see, it just felt like right the like the the right next step. But mm. also, I mean, I prayed on it heavily, I asked loads of people in all aspects of my life, mm. and then subhanallah, you know, there I am standing in front of five hundred people saying, "Hey guys, do you want to vote for me as president?" <laughs> Obviously, a little bit more intense and dramatic, yeah. but yeah. So it was just a natural progression and a natural desire to want to carry on benefiting Muslim students. What I want to find it though is you knew that there wasn't a female president. So what made a young Muslim woman from Scotland yeah. <laughs> run for a position that was going to be you know, responsible for mm. all these people, as you just said? So how did that come about? What inspired you? I think the nature of being first in life is one of those things where you don't have a role model per se or a target or you don't even know how it looks or it's going to feel. Mm. You're literally putting yourself out there way out of your comfort zone and trying to figure out, okay, is this the right step? So I think um, it was never my desire to be the first one or to even be that person. But subhanAllah, you know, it's where the journey took me. And I think a lot of it, you know, some people said to me that, you know, perhaps doing it will help lead the way for others. Mm. And that's a good, good reason to do something, but not the only reason. Of course. But also I just kind of felt like, you know, if Allah has brought this to me, then perhaps it's something that, you know, um, I need to take the opportunity, I need to go through that door and see where it leads. So it was very much a, quite a scary uh, experience for me as well. But also I think it required a lot of kind of courage. Um, yeah. And you just kind of had, to, I just had to step up to the plate and, and take the opportunity and then hope that it would work out. This is what I meant by inspiring, like, do, <laughs> do you know, the first person trailblazing, as I call it. Mm. I want to ask you, 
the lessons that you learned because with leadership, with being first, being Muslim, mm. all these things tie in together, right? So what were, if you can like, you know, think of maybe the top few, biggest lessons that you learned from doing this, mm. from, you know, being elected, going for the role, and especially from a spiritual point of view, um, how does that tie into what you did and how that affected your decisions and how you actually went ahead and carried out that role? Mm -hmm. So I think the, the best way to look at this is to kind of look at it from the spiritual journey, the leadership journey and the women in leadership journey. Um, and I think that one of the th aspects that you really learn is that leadership is a very lonely place, mm. especially when you're at the top per se. And when there aren't very many other women who are also in these positions, you know, I would find myself in meetings where I would be the only female in the room, you know, yeah. representing, you know, the Muslim student movement. Or I find myself in committee meetings where, you know, I'm massively outnumbered. I'm quite small as well. So <laughs> I'm like, OK, I've got to be assertive. I've got yeah. to, you know. So I often find myself thinking, OK, you know, there's a pressure on me to deliver mm -hmm. and also a bit of a microscope because I am a woman and no one's done this before. I remember someone on my committee who I won't name is like, this is the first time I've ever had a female boss. And I'm like, OK, good. <laughs> good, yeah. good, you know, <laughs> get used to it. Um, so there was loads of kind of, I think for did a lot Did that give you confidence or did that make you think that, you know what, the, the purpose that you spoke of earlier, mm. did that motivate you to be like, OK, this is good. I need more people that think like this. Um, or was that just a kind of a comment that you just brushed off a little bit? I think I probably brushed it off okay. and thought, OK, you need to get real. OK. <laughs> um, no, I think for me that what was really inspiring was when other girls would come up to me as I toured the country all the way to Cornwall, actually, and they would just come up to me and say, you know, wow, this is the first time I've ever seen a Muslim woman in a role like yours. Mm. You're literally the president, you know, you're not just head of the department. And, you know, like, that's so inspiring. And people were like, yeah, now I'm going to run for this position or I'm going to... Wow. So for some people, it was just a mindset that they were able to change mm. just because visually seeing me in that position... Um, but I think in terms of like those challenges, so one of the biggest lessons I learned is that ultimately you have to have trust and faith in Allah mm. because when you're on those very long train journeys and plane journeys or when you miss your train, um, you realize that, you know, though you may be surrounded by people, ultimately the only thing that's going to keep you going is knowing that you're doing this for the right reason. Mm. But also knowing that, you know, Allah is accepting it from you, that you know, there's some benefit and, and goodness that's coming out of it. Yeah. And so often I find myself, you know, exhausted, tired at the end of it. And then I'd ask myself, why am I doing this? Yeah. You know, or people would ask me like, why are you doing this? And I'm like, mm. oh, because yeah, I believe in what I'm doing. I believe that this is, this work is important and I'm doing it for the sake of Allah. Ultimately, you know, mm. if this is what's going to help me in this life and the hereafter, but also to benefit all those around me. So I think the intention is so important, as is the mission. But also you need to have very good company and very good people that can advise and, and that you can trust. And I always talk about the normal friend. Okay. We have these in our life, you know. We spoke about that back on episode yeah, 19. Yeah, so you've got to have a friend that literally does not care about what you're doing in your life and, and, and that they are not involved and the drama is not so deep. Yeah, yeah. They're just like, okay, that's great. And they'll just give you a very matter-of-fact opinion mm. and you'll just be like... Okay, you're so right. Or, you know, sometimes you need your mom just to remind you. You yeah. might be the president of the whatever, whatever, yeah. but you're going to clean your room. <laughs> so humility is Big also a very important concept. Yeah. And then finally, I would say that, you know, when you're in a public-facing role, you need to remember that people are, people are paying attention. People mm. are looking at you. And often things like privacy or even spirituality can be very challenging mm. because outwardly you're very Islamic, you're doing this great work. But inwardly, you know, are you keeping up with um, that additional worship, that additional ibadah, your Quran routine? Are you making sure you give sadaqah? Are you making sure you're doing deeds that people can't see? Mm. And, you know, I used to get loads of advice and, you know, just making sure that if people are upset with you, like, apologize, you know, move on. If people are praising you too much, you know, make tawbah, make, remember, remember your sins, you know. Yeah. And... When you feel that this is me, about me, like I'm the only one that's going to make this change. I'm the only one that can do this. You remember that when you put your head on the prayer mat, that, you know, Allah is the Almighty and that you're just one speck, you know. That's and deep. remembering your place in this world. And I think that was one of my biggest lessons as president, which is I'm just laying one more brick to the house. 
I'm not going to change at all, you know. Mm. But my desire is always there. But at the end of the day, you know, other people need to come, other people need to do these journeys, and it's part of the nature of being an ummah or being part of society. Mm. And also that, does the work end here? No, <laughs> it mm. doesn't, you know. We have to remember that this is just a segment, we're moving on to another segment, but that doesn't mean we stop. We don't just go into our careers or whatever, yeah. we stop. So that kind of desire to change is still beating within me and the need to kind of continue to giving back is still in me. But I've learned so many lessons about taking care of myself, mm. taking care of spirituality and remembering to really cherish those around you. When I was traveling so much, I, I didn't get to see my family a lot. I didn't get to see my friends a lot. I didn't get to just do social things, although, yeah. you know. So it's important to really cherish those moments because, mm. you know, life changes and your circumstances change. But those people that you really love, they should always have that time and priority in your life. Mm. I love the fact that you said we have to have normal friends. I totally agree. I have got friends as well who are completely outside of this arena. Non inspiration. Non inspiration. <laughs> although non inspiration still inspiring. Keeps you keeps you yeah. grounded because you sometimes forget the why, like you said. I want to go back to the the women part, right? And what that actually means for other women out there. Because I, I'm sure that there's many sisters out there right now who perhaps aspire to be in these positions, in these roles. They know they have this ability, but they just perhaps haven't got that push. Mm -hmm. Do you? How do you think your story and your journey so far will impact them? And have you seen that impact already happen? You mentioned it a little bit uh -huh. with those sisters that came up to you, but overall, how do you think this will affect them? Oh, that's a really deep question. <laughs> well, so I mean, I think that... One of the, I mean, I've obviously travelled up and down the UK, I've met hundreds, if not thousands of students, and what I've kind of seen is that, you know, with every great Islamic society or, you know, society itself, you'll find that there's loads of sisters that are really active, they're doing the groundwork, they're doing the hard work, um, and they're very competent, you know. One thing that we're always told is about, you know, it's just the best person for the job, but are we really looking at all the best people, you know? Mm. And I think that there are so many talented and inspiring sisters and I've met them. They've housed me and fed me and brought me milkshakes. But I think the main thing is just confidence <clears throat> and that, that knowing that pathway and that journey as to how to get there. So, you know, I know I'm good at it, but should I do it? So that's like the company. That's like the people around them telling them, yes, you're good enough. Yes, you can do it. Mm. And then it's, okay, but how do I do it? And then hopefully it's like, seeing people that have achieved it and unfortunately you know role models and all that stuff is yeah especially with female female role models you know there is a bit of a lack at the moment but i hope that if anything with my journey it'll be that you know you can be in that position you can do it because you are good and competent and actually brothers will support you sisters will support you the real challenge is with yourself and mm. your own self-doubt. And that's what I've noticed. And I've done loads of these empowerment workshops. And I find that I always ask people, you know, what's your biggest monsters? Mm. And often it's themselves. It's the judgments and the assumptions they have. And I think that if you remember why you're doing this and just go for it, then what's the worst that can I happen? I think people you know? will recognize that, right? And I think mm. that will actually help you too. I want to go back and I'm not going to mention names or situations, but there's one particular occurrence I remember it was during our time in our ISOC where we were in doubt as to what the outcome was going to be uh -huh. of a particular event or time. And I remember very distinctly a, a conversation of us deciding just to be sincere mm. and just to remember the why. And then literally a couple of like months later, we won like awards and we were on TV <laughs> yeah, yeah, together yeah, and yeah. stuff. So. I, even, wow. you know, not just for sisters, but for everyone in general, I think the take home message here is you know yourself, know why you're doing it. And once people see that, I hope inshallah, it doesn't matter if you're a brother or a sister mm. or where you're from, as long as, you know, your intentions for Allah and the impact's going to happen by itself. So lastly, before we end off here, for those out there watching um, that are on the edge, a bit of doubt, mm. what is the last message you have to them? What's the kind of Drop the mic. <laughs> the drop the mic yeah. moment. Wow. Um, what I would say is that don't be afraid of the journey, you know? Don't be afraid to get it wrong and make mistakes and be in uncomfortable situations or have uncomfortable conversations. I've had to do all of these things. Yeah. I've even missed a couple of trains in, in, in the meantime. But I think that part of achieving what is good or best 
is being willing to start mm. and actually just remembering that at the end of the day, like the outcome of all affairs is with Allah. Mm. And you are not going to be the person that's going to like make it amazing or not amazing. You're just going to try. Mm. You're going to do your best to try. So what I would say to people is just go for it. You know, think about what you want and think about what you've got to offer and, and be, uh, be willing to learn and be willing to recognize that there are plenty of things you need to fix about yourself. And there's plenty of th scenarios where you'll realize, oh, actually, maybe I could have done that better. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like you tried something and you'll move on. Mm -hmm. um, so just, just go for it and, and keep going and see where it takes you. I'm not going to lie, I feel very inspired right now. <laughs> okay, really? I think I've just been through one of your workshops, but okay. thank you so much, Sarah, for being yeah. here. It's been a pleasure having you. Um, and then before I let you go, Going to catch you a little bit off guard here. Oh no. We're going to do a little bit of a fun, rapid round uh, of questions. Completely random. Okay. I want you to think of the first thing that comes to your head. Oh no. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Is the, I'm going to start off easy, okay? Number one, favorite name of Allah? Oh, the one. The one. Favorite surah? Naba. Makkah or Medina? Oh my god. I'm gonna go for Makkah actually, because it's got like Gaba and stuff. Gaba and stuff, it. yeah. <laughs> Favorite iftar during Ramadan? Oh no, why are you doing this? Um, I love the, the Isaac iftar with everybody there. and. Okay. Yeah. What's the funniest thing you ever witnessed at the masjid? Oh my god. <laughs> we, we all have a masjid story. Um, probably like when people are pushing other people and trying to correct them and then the person's just not having it <laughs> it's just a bit of a scuffle like you're not going to change my situation i'm going to do what i'm going to do if someone were to buy you the perfect eid gift what would it be this is this is a terrible question the perfect this eid question. gift oh holiday around the world guys why not all why expenses not? paid if you could choose any nasheed as the theme song of your life <laughs> <laughs> these questions <laughs> we know who did okay the theme the nasheed that is, is the theme song of your life of my life is it just answer um, it do you know i love maulaya by maher zayn because mm. it's really upbeat, upbeat but also like mashallah but then i found it's a wedding song oh, so okay but i am married now mm. so okay one of those finishing off almost um coffee or tea tea of course if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life what would it be Oh my gosh. Oh, I had a rice cake phase, but I'm over it now. And I think I'm going towards cake. Okay. But I don't know what kind of cake. It's These cakes. You know what? I'm going to go for waffles and strawberries. Together? Yeah, with the, the Nutella and stuff. Oh, okay. Go, go for, for the that, dessert. Yeah. Okay. Go for the dessert. Um, Just live on waffles. Which word are you guilty of saying the most? Oh, I used to do this, but I stopped. Um... Can you guys check? Can we rewind and see what I've been... That's interesting. I don't know. I don't okay, know. never mind. We'll skip it. Um, complete the sentence. The one thing I can't live without is... Oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> do I need to want me to redo that one? Do you know what? Let's move on. Do you have a hidden talent? I enjoy painting mm. and writing, but I don't do it that often. But yeah. And apparently set decor. <laughs> apparently set decor as well. Okay, we're getting a bit more random now. If you could be an animal for a day, which one would it be? Oh, a bird. Love it, yeah. But I a tropical bird. The most Zadok answer. <laughs> Just say no. <laughs> okay, this is a difficult one. Which would you rather, A, be caught with your foot in the sink, or B, have your phone go off with a really embarrassing song in the middle of the masjid during salah. Foot in the sink every time. <laughs> and I've done it before. <laughs> Last few. What is the best advice you've ever received? Oh. Hmm. I think that you should trust yourself. What is the best advice that you have for others? At the end of the day, just don't forget to pray. <laughs> salah on time, yeah. guys. Pray your salah and you'll be fine. What is the number one thing you want to be remembered for? That I helped others. And lastly, I guess, who is your de inspiration? Who inspires you? Ozzy Magis, of course. <laughs> MashaAllah. Sarah, so, thank you so much for being um, here. It's been wonderful. Hopefully, have you back again next time. Yeah, yeah. Guys, that is a wrap. Join us for the next episode. We will be talking about Brother Shabazz Mirza on his Ramadan legacy app, his planner, and where that story came from, inshallah. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.